welcome to What Are You Reading, a podcast with the Public Library of Mount Vernon in Knox County. My name is Christy. And I'm Katie. And this month, we chose a book by an author that's actually, um, by the time you're seeing this, she'll have already visited us, but her name is Erin McGraw, and she is a local author. Mm -hmm. um, she's a professor at The Ohio State University, and um, the book we chose is The Seamstress of Hollywood Boulevard. Um, awesome cover, by the way. Yes. Um, <laughs> We uh, were able to purchase multiple copies of this because of the LSTA uh, COAA grant. Um, mm -hmm. It's been just such an awesome thing. And as you've seen that kind of be a theme with our podcast lately, um, these were a part of that. Mm -hmm. So um, we always want to shout out um, Jamie Lynn Smith Fletcher for helping us get that grant um, mm -hmm. with LSTA. Um, we have been able to do such great things with it. So. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to like kind of read out a little bit of a synopsis for the book this time, which usually we don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we kind of just jump into it. But I thought that it's so beautifully written mm -hmm. that I kind of wanted to read it out. So you guys just kind of got a, a sample of of her writing style. Um, so it says, I couldn't cook, but I could sew. It would have been better the other way around. Trapped in Kansas at the turn of the 20th century, Nell Platt is 17, unhappily married, and the mother of two baby girls. No reality could be further from her secret dreams of glamour and excitement, dreams that will tempt her to do the unthinkable and run away to the glittering wonderland of Los Angeles and the burgeoning motion picture industry. Lucky for Nell, her experience as a seamstress to the ladies of her Kansas town translates beautifully to work as a customer or a costumer to Hollywood in the Roaring Twenties. She renames herself Madame Anel and builds a new life for herself that looks so much more like the one she had always imagined. But a knock on the door threatens to rip apart the seams of her own carefully constructed costume, and Nell is forced to confront the legacy of abandonment and deception. Can she rework the delicate fabric of her life? Ooh. Wow. Yeah. So that kind of grabbed us right away anyway. Um, mm -hmm. which is why we picked this one out of all of the books that we had the opportunity to read. We thought we were kind of excited about this one. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote down specifically that very first line that catches me. I can't cook, but I could sew. It would have been better the other way around. Mm -hmm. I like that just, it says so much. It does. It does. Especially once you get into the book, it's like, mm -hmm. yep totally makes sense mm -hmm. and I know it's something that we talked about um because she's from a small town in Kansas so yeah it's nice that she can sew clothes but mm -hmm. she's so she's so fancy about it yes and she can't cook at all mm -hmm. and yet her family forces her to cook mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. completely mock her for not being able to cook but they keep making her do it yeah <laughs> it's terrible it's like you know hoping that she'll get better at it or training her to be a good wife in this community in this time period mm -hmm. um and you she's we get an introduction to her family um so we've got this really hard-working family that lives on a very small plot of land in kansas Mm -hmm. um, flat as the eye can see, um, just dust everywhere. Um, their home has a dirt floor. Mm -hmm. um, they are, um, they're getting by. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. So their commodity really is making sure that they're marrying off their, their girls to decent families. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, poor, poor Nell just does not fit the bill. She is so much like her father. Mm -hmm. The spitting image of her father. So um, we get a lot of character development between the two early on in the book, which I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. um, even though we're dealing with some really heavy subjects, we're mm -hmm. dealing with some um, emotional abuse due to alcoholism. We're dealing with some physical abuse due to alcoholism. Mm -hmm. um, but we're getting that glimpse of what her life was truly like through 
her eyes, what her family was like, Mm -hmm. um, what they valued, which was the opposite of what Nell had to provide. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Which that was something that really caught me from the beginning was um, Nell does not like her life. Mm -hmm. She never did. Um, So when the first... The first boy comes a call in. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, at least it's a change of scenery. Yeah. She didn't have high hopes for this like romantic fairy tale existence. Mm-hmm. And even her father, who is an abusive alcoholic, mm-hmm. is like, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. And um, she moves to a sod house, but it's on a hill. Yep. The only hill. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where she's like, oh, well, at least the scenery is going to change. Yep. So that is, and, and that helps with, I think it helps humanize the father too. Yeah, definitely. Because it's like, yeah, he gets angry and he does things that he shouldn't do. Mm-hmm. And what he does is not okay. No. But there is... It's not out of hate that he's doing the things yeah. that he's doing. He is, I think he feels just like now. Mm-hmm. And he's he's trying to, there's a really touching conversation that he has with her that he's trying to get through to her. Like you said, that this you don't have to do this. I know that you're meant for something else. And she basically says like this is the best I could do and Mm -hmm. he's just so disgusted with her reaction to that Mm -hmm. and I think he's a little heartbroken because he Mm -hmm. even though he wasn't necessarily cultivating that spark in her I think he thought she was strong-willed enough to say no I'm not going to do what I'm what I'm supposed to do Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a different path and when she was so willing to just accept that that was her fate he kind of, you know, threw his arms up in the air. Well, a, a, actually a tin of salve he threw at her um, to show his anger mm-hmm. at, at her attitude, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we get just this really bleak picture starting out of mm-hmm. this home life. Um, everything's the same color. Everything's always covered in dirt. Um, and that changes quite a bit, um, not too terribly far into the book. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, after her marriage, which is again, you know, starts out great, exciting, like you Mm -hmm. said, change of scenery, um, new family to take care of, Mm -hmm. uh, that quickly spirals into yet another abusive relationship. Yes. And not, excuse me, not just with her husband, Mm -hmm. but with her new mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. which she knew was an awful person Mm -hmm. going into it. But I I think she outdid herself. Yeah. So just imagine being in a a, a sod house Mm -hmm. that has a window. Yeah. And you're trying to cultivate this new relationship Mm -hmm. and your in-laws are next door. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was that was so cringy. It's mm-hmm. she obviously such a great writer because I mean you you yourself are like oh gosh like the tension is so thick mm-hmm. um, in that situation of you know trying to start a family with her new husband your mother and father in law right right on the other side of the wall um, she's the town is very small so the mother in law has a huge reputation for being very persnickety very you know. Um, domineering, Mm -hmm. um, which does create some really interesting moments between her and Nell, because Nell is is still very um, opinionated, Mm -hmm. very strong character. Um, She will not back down Mm -hmm. from a verbal altercation. Um, So that creates some really interesting scenarios. Yeah, I feel like they would be friends. Yeah, and if, I think Nell even says that. Yeah, that she thinks they would be that they are friends at because one point. they're they're honest. They're brutally honest with they each other. They are brutally honest people, and that's something that she doesn't share with her husband mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and her husband certainly doesn't share anything because he wanted you know the Stepford wife. Yeah, and his mother wanted for him uh-huh. the Stepford wife. Absolutely. And they did not get her. 
No. Well, and her now becomes pregnant with her first child, and their treatment of her stays exactly the same. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a lot of her painting this poor fence that she continually whitewashes over and over and over again. Um, that is very like, you know, poignant to how they're how they're treating her. They expect her to be this perfect idea of a woman when she's heavily pregnant she herself is suffering and that she didn't paint the fence good enough yeah she's gonna have to repaint it yeah and even shortly after she gives birth mm-hmm. to her first child it's like well guess what if you don't plant you don't eat yeah so yeah you you didn't till the vegetable garden like you said you were going to so mm-hmm. you're out of luck yeah and i think all of this is a a good setup because I think we both agree that we're not Mm -hmm. crazy about no. Yeah. Yep. However, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it does explain a lot as to why she ends up leaving her family, Mm -hmm. which is mentioned in the, in the synopsis. So yes. So we, we didn't feel like we needed to say spoiler alert since (laughs) since we already spoiled it in the synopsis. (laughs) But, um, (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, someone and and one thing that I thought um, as I was reading it was perhaps uh, aside from all of the abuse that is going on, which mm-hmm. obviously affects people, mm-hmm. is I do feel like she was having some postpartum issues with both of her pregnancies. Mm-hmm. So it and especially she has she had a woman that lived near her that said don't love a baby until they're one Mm -hmm. which i mean at the time period might have been good advice because Mm -hmm. you don't like once the baby reaches a year old it's probably not going to die Mm -hmm. on you Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's like well how how do you get them to one without it yeah absolutely it's that again like that just bleakness of Mm -hmm. how they're existing um, that really drives that home that, you know, this infant's probably it's a good chance is going to pass away. Mm-hmm. And um, Nell, ver- Nell obviously struggles with that. There's a lot of um, mental health issues going on here mm-hmm. at a time where that's not even on the table. Those those words didn't even exist. Mm-hmm. So um, we we did. We both started talking about thinking, OK, there's there's a scene we won't go too into detail, but. There's a scene where um, the life of one of the children is in jeopardy. And her reaction to that is just kind of a stoic. Um, and she's just just had a had a given birth um, in a traumatic way. But she's very calm. Um, you know, oh, don't worry. They'll, yeah, they'll like, save her. Yeah, she's fine. She, she has complete faith mm-hmm. in her husband, her father-in-law, mm-hmm. and her mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like, well, I'll just sit here and... Hope it turns out okay. Yeah, hope for the best and see what happens. It, very much that kind of uh, kind of a symptom of postpartum that we've become more accustomed to in our in our current time. Yeah, 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 and like we said, the emotional and well, the it, the emotional abuse never stops. Mm-hmm. The physical abuse kind of comes and goes, mm-hmm. but from from the second. She gives birth. It's just like everybody gravitates towards the child and she's on her own. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot. And she's 17. Yeah. Yeah. She's a child herself, raising children, dealing with um, an entire life of abuse. Mm -hmm. So she, um, she keeps thinking back to a time when um, a preacher had come into town and had stopped to have dinner at her house with her family. And he had been telling the family about his time in California and how beautiful it was. And she couldn't even imagine. He has her kind of picture it with a, a sky on a tin, you know, a print. Um, but she can't even imagine some place that has this beautiful sky and these like lush oranges and, um, you know, all of this foliage and things. So she keeps kind of coming back to that idea Mm -hmm. and we see her taking off and making that choice to leave her family Mm -hmm. and chase her dreams, becoming a seamstress in Hollywood, Mm -hmm. which brings with it a whole nother set of problems. Yeah. Because 
success doesn't happen overnight. No. And she sort of, um, her, her choice in men doesn't really change a whole lot. Yeah. Um, until a lot later on in the book. And um, I haven't finished it yet, but. Who knows? He appears to be very different, but mm-hmm. now that things are coming to a head, could be the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of times when I was reading this book that I was like, oh, no, no. Yeah, why are you making these decisions? <laughs> this is definitely one of those where you're like in the backseat, you're like, stop, don't do that, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why? And and it's one of those things, because she's, she's a character that's like, why do you make it so hard for us to like you? Yeah, absolutely. You want to like her so much. And, and yeah, and it, it is very hard because in our culture, mm-hmm. having a mother leave her children mm-hmm. is so... Yeah. Beyond the pale. Yeah. And I think that's why McGraw goes so into detail in the beginning to be like, it was really her or yeah, absolutely. the children. Yeah. And I think she she really saved her own life um, mm-hmm. because if she had stayed in that situation, um, I'm not sure what choices she would have made, how far she would have gone Yeah, uh, with her unhappiness. Um, I think that in in what she was facing she made the best decision that she could for herself yes at taking into account abuse Mm -hmm. being a child herself Mm -hmm. she did had just gone through a really traumatic Mm -hmm. birth experience so like best best case scenario if she had stayed she probably would have died in childbirth at some point yeah absolutely um so, yeah, we don't we won't say too much, but we did want to kind of set it up a little bit and um, let you guys know that it is it's so beautifully written. Um, mm-hmm. The pages kind of um, at first I, I was trying to get into it, but then they just kind of flew by mm-hmm. and um, I really got invested in the story. So um, we hope that you pick it up and, um, you know, give it a chance because it's um, it can be hard at times, but. I think the reward is worth it. Yes. I think once you, once she gets to California, Mm -hmm. um, the whole beginning is just so bleak. It is. That like, even towards the end of that section, I was like, oh my gosh, we need to move on. Yeah. But once she gets to California, the scenery is different. Yeah. And that triggers a whole lot of new things Mm -hmm. rather than just more of the the bleakness yeah you still have those like we said those decisions that we might not necessarily have been making um but we do have the glitz and the glamour we've got the dark side of hollywood we have you know what it kind of takes for her to make a name for herself as Mm -hmm. a complete no one with a new name yes. uh, starting out, but mm-hmm. we get to see her live out what she'd been fantasizing about for those 17 years mm-hmm. um, leading up to her marriage. So yeah. um, that part is exciting. Um, and seeing how she navigates that, knowing nothing but, you know, absolute poverty in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then dealing with the aftermath of the choices you mm-hmm. made, which we've all made dumb decisions when we were 17 or you know when Mm -hmm. we were young absolutely and then 20 years later her mistakes come back to haunt her absolutely and we and we won't spoil that so yeah you're gonna have to to read it yes you're gonna have to pick it up to see uh what might have appeared on her doorstep so that shakes her to her core and makes her have to reevaluate her life completely so Mm -hmm. um I hope you got, we got you guys excited about this one. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, join us next time. Um, next month, we are going to be celebrating our summer reading program. Mm-hmm. So the theme for this year's summer reading program is All Together Now. Mm-hmm. And um, Katie and I are both big music fans. Mm-hmm. So in our brains, we automatically went, ooh, Beatles. So we were thinking <laughs> kind of music themed. Um, so we both picked books that have a musical theme. Mm-hmm. So both of our books are about bands. We're super excited for it. Um, so we'll have tons of information for you guys um, in that that video as well. So mm-hmm. join us next time. Thanks so much for watching and listening to us. And until next time.
Bye. Bye.